Hey y'all, this is Culture Soup, where tech, culture, and business collide. It's a podcast that spoons up everything hot from social media. I'm your host, L. Michelle Smith, and each episode, we bring you some of the most notable and not yet notable thought leaders in tech, business, and culture. Today is Thursday, October 6th, 2022, and I'm your host, executive producer and creator, L. Michelle Smith, and this is the Culture Soup Podcast. We've been on break for a while to get us through the summertime and also to get us through back to school time frame and also to get me through and ensure my sanity. So much is going on. I thank each and every one of you for being loyal listeners. We're now heard in more than 70 countries. That's almost every continent on the planet except for Antarctica. And I do believe they have Wi-Fi there. I'm not sure. (laughs) Somebody get the word to the folks in Antarctica. Today is a special Coaching Corner episode. It is the first of the fall season. And while we don't do seasons per se on the show, the Coaching Corner is that episode where I explore topics that impact your leadership aspirations and your life aspirations. Because as you know, I am a Fortune 100 executive and personal coach, neuroscience and applied positive psychology informed. I'm so excited to be able to bring this episode to you because while I'm going to give you some updates, We're going to explore a topic that has been very popular over the last year. And I know so because I continue to receive requests to speak on the topic. And it does come directly from my book, No Thanks, Seven Ways to Say. I'll just include myself. And the second edition is called The Remix. And by the way, big news on Monday. October 3rd, the remix, which was originally released in May of 2021 in hardcover, is now available in paperback worldwide on Amazon and other retailers. And you can also get the ebook version or the Kindle version. It's all out there for you. I decided to do this as a result of my writing the next book. Yes, please. Seven ways to say I'm entitled to the C-suite. Secrets women of color need to know now to find their happy and thrive in an exclusive corporate culture. You see, it helps to read those last two bonus chapters in the remix to tee up what is going to happen. And yes, please. Those final two chapters also foreshadow my daughter's children's book, which was released in August of 2021, No Thanks for Girls, Seven Ways to Say I'm Beautiful, Strong, and Enough. So if you haven't gotten the second edition of No Thanks, now's the time, because Yes Please is due out in early 2023. So yes, knowing your value has been the most requested topic for my speaking. And I've spoken to several Fortune 500 organizations, employee teams, employee resource groups, nonprofit organizations, universities, other students, Because this topic is applicable across any industry, any discipline, at any age. In fact, I wish that I'd heard my message when I was 18, 22, because it would have helped me earlier than when I discovered it when I was 46. You know, I spent the day with the Denise Graves Foundation in Washington, D.C., 
just last week as they launched their Shared Voices program. And I'm going to have Denise on soon to talk about the program, but it's a consortium and conservatory of about 13 different institutions bringing together HBCUs and the finest of the classical musical institutions in the nation, including Juilliard School, the Peabody Institute at Johns Hopkins, and other fine classical institutions with the likes of Howard University, Morehouse, Spelman, Fisk, Morgan State, Bowie State. Oh, I could name others, but altogether 13. And we launched this on the campus of Howard University last week. I am very humbled to be a member of the advisory board for the Denise Graves Foundation. And I was honored to speak in the breakout session. That's right. I spoke to young artists about knowing their value and how important so many of them are able to stand in their power on the platform and on stage. But it's in between those stage appearances and sometimes even in auditions or facing rejection that these young artists needed this message now more than ever. And it appears that even senior leaders, executive leaders, C-suite leaders, even the faculty and knowledgeable adults that were a part of the Denise Graves Shared Voices launch from the Met to the White House to the Smithsonian and everyone in between who was represented there needed to hear it as well. I think the warmest and fuzziest response I received was from Denise Graves' mother herself, who said that she learned a lot, even at her age, to embrace her own value. There's something transformative about this message, and we're going to dig into it, but I want to give you some more information about what's going on. We just talked about the release of the paperback version of No Thanks, the remix. The other thing you should know is that I'm broadcasting from Washington, D.C. today. I'm here for another reason. I'm giving this same talk to the Executive Leadership Council's Mid-Level Management Symposium here in Washington, D.C. And that means that I'm talking to executives who are in the pipeline to be the next C-level executives of the future. You see, they're cherry-picked by their companies. They're Black leaders, and they're here to learn. And one of the sessions is knowing your value, the key to your leadership aspirations. And I'll be leading it. I did it yesterday for the virtual symposium, and today I do it in person. I want to send a shout out to those who listened in and watched the virtual edition of that message. This group was so on fire. Not only did my phone nearly blow up to smithereens after (laughs) the session because of all the direct messages, all of the Facebook and Instagram and LinkedIn messages and comments and engagement and likes and email messages and leads that came through for coaching requests. And I mean, I was inundated and it was the best feeling because it was then that I had the proof that what I said was meaningful and impactful. Thank you to each and every one of you from all the companies from across the U.S. and and beyond who took the time to circle back and let me know how the message touched you. I also want to thank you because I had an ask at the end of that session, and that was to help me with a survey question. And I particularly wanted to hear from Black women executives. And the survey was brief, and it's about 
sponsorship as it pertains to race and gender of black executive women who are on the climb to executive leadership. And let me tell you, hundreds of you responded and I was able to close the survey. I have the data that I need to continue writing this one chapter, which is pretty provocative. And it asks some questions that I haven't seen asked before. And you help me answer them. So I thank you, Mid-Level Management Symposium attendees here at the Executive Leadership Council. And I am so excited to hit the platform at about two o'clock Eastern time at the Marriott Marquis in downtown Washington, DC. So excited. So we're here today and I'm giving you the coaching corner. When will we start again? We will come out of sabbatical for a video podcast on the anniversary of this show. And you may remember, and you might just scroll down and see that the first episode happened on October 28th, four years ago. So we're still going to stick to the Thursday time frame, but it will be the same week as that anniversary. And I'm planning something very special with a special guest. You'll have to stay tuned for that. Now, let's get down to business, knowing your value. Why is this message so important and resonating with anyone who hears it? It's because it's core to knowing what your purpose is. And that goes beyond what you do as a leader in business or the arts or the sciences or engineering, or tech, or anything that you do. This is about understanding how your identity and your knowledge of self is intertwined with your value. The fact is that you have to know who you are to understand your value. How do you do that? That's the nut that most don't crack. You know, I'm a woman of faith and I've heard minister after minister tell us and write books about how it's important to know your purpose. But I've yet to see someone unfurl how that actually happens. And while most people know that it's important They just don't know the first steps to take. And this is my shout out to the coaching community because that's the only industry I know that takes the opportunity to break this process down. My process is unique and it also borrows from a mentor coach of mine, applied positive psychology, and my experience as a leader and as someone who experienced her origin story at the age of 46. When I was speaking to those young artists, I gave them three numbers to remember because they were significant in my life and also in my search for my value. They were 12, 22, and 46. I'll get back to those numbers in a second, but you'll probably surmise that knowing your value requires reflection and it requires that you dig deep into your own story. Most of us don't take the time to do this work. Many of us don't know that this work is meaningful to knowing and being able to articulate our value. You see, there are keys to our future and our past. And until you understand that your identity goes beyond your name, surname, your family, even your job title and who you work for, those things on your resume or your vitae, you will not know your true identity. 
your identity, again, is inextricably intertwined with your value. So it begs the question, do you know who you are? Wow. In leadership, I'd love to bottom line this with the idea of this question. What one problem do you solve? Which is very difficult to answer unless you've done the work that I've explained. So one of the tools that I use was provided to me at an executive leadership council leadership week by a woman who I now consider to be a mentor coach, Trudy Bourgeois. She's been on this show. She's quoted throughout my books. And I even pointed to her as the source for this exercise. And it is the 10 most significant moments. Check out No Thanks, Seven Ways to Say, I'll Just Include Myself for this breakdown. But essentially, you're going to draw a straight line. It looks like a timeline. And you're going to go back and think about the things and happenings in your life, in work, in personal, that were most significant. Now, it can't just be some fact. And significant moments are either very, 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 very positive or very negative. As you draw that line, go back as far as you can think for the most significant moment, the first one. They're going to be 10. And plot a dot above the line if it's positive, high above the line if it's very positive, low beneath the line if it's negative or challenging. Now, these are significant moments, so that means that there's not going to be a dot on the line because it wouldn't be significant. And you're going to plot those dots with a line connecting them And you'll see ebbs and tides like bell curves above the line and below the line. And sometimes you're going to see that you have plateaus and you have valleys. That's important. Tell yourself the stories of these significant moments and where and where those curves ebb and tide. I want you to take note of the lesson that you learned between the good times and the bad. Jot those down. What you'll find is that there are leadership lessons that you can use moving forward to tell your story. Unique lessons to you. Now, when you go through this exercise, I also want you to think back on the trends in the stories that you tell. As I looked at the trends, I discovered a love and attraction for technology. I also discovered that I was a student of culture from a young age, and I became pretty active in it around my college years, and that would never stop. I also found that I had a penchant for business and entrepreneurship and creating processes and ecosystems for business. This is how I developed my leadership platform and my value proposition, which is a marketing term, but it applies here because it speaks to your value and intertwined in my value proposition are those three areas. There are usually three areas. There may be more, but I encourage you to find the top three. Now let's stop for a minute and let's talk about why it's important for you to not only know your value, but to be able to articulate it. You see, If you don't know that, others will speak value into your life or not. 
they will deem you valuable and how valuable for you. And what's the problem with that? Not everyone gets it right. Now, I was talking to the leaders on yesterday about how there are certain people in our formative years and even throughout our leadership journey that get it right. And typically they pour that right back into you during times when you may not know your value yourself and that's good. But know that everyone shouldn't have that ability, although just about anyone assigns value to people subconsciously just when they meet them and they make these decisions about you and they act accordingly. You want to arm yourself with the ability to articulate your value and set the bar and set the tone so that everyone understands how you should be treated. That's so important. (laughs) I don't know how to explain to you how important that is. If you can articulate your value, you can impact your way forward, period. If others are imposing their ideas of your value on you, and you're just following what they say, you will find yourself wafting through life and through work and through business. And you don't want to be off your path. So let me tell you a bit about values with an S. In applied positive psychology, we learn that values are our primary motivators, intrinsic motivators. Those are the things that come from deep inside that keep us pushing and we don't get tired no matter what the challenge because they're so important to us. It's very different from extrinsic motivations which come from outside of us and sometimes they can give us a nice swift kick in the behind to get moving, but they're not as sustainable. I'll give you a great example. My other mentor coach, Valerie Burton, whose institute I went through to get certified for coaching, often tells the story that sometimes she procrastinates. And one way that she gets herself motivated and moving is to make a commitment publicly. And that extrinsic motivation keeps her committed to getting things done. So she talks about how when she started the CAP Institute, she had been thinking about it and planning it and thinking and planning and thinking and planning, but never really launching. And she finally decided if I announce it and make it public and put a date to it, I'll probably get this done because I don't want to fail in front of people. So that was her extrinsic motivation and it can work. It does work for some people, but the most sustainable motivation, but keep you going over time is intrinsic because it is deeply rooted in your values. You can find your values a few ways. One is an exercise that I do with my clients that ask about your passion points. What are the things that are so important to you? And I ask them this question. If you were on your deathbed and your family surrounding you, your friends surrounding you, everybody important is around you. They've given you your last request. This is a peaceful going out. (laughs) And the chaplain or minister is standing there about to read your last rites. And just before you close your eyes to go see the maker, you open them. And you say, but before I go, I have this to say about that topic. Now, a passion is something that evokes emotion in you. It makes you happy. It makes you very sad. It makes you very angry. And it's something you want to impact. What are those passions in your life? 
those passions are closely related, if not to your values. The VIA Character Strengths Assessment given by the University of Penn, that is one of the assessments I give to my clients as we jumpstart our relationship, is character strengths. And we have found that many of those results reflect client values as well. So if you want to try that, it's free. Go to AuthenticHappiness.com. Take this assessment. It takes about 25 minutes. Take it by yourself. Don't ask for anybody's input and see where you go. Once you find those values, once you find those strengths, once you identify your passions, this will be your North Star. And you'll be able to say, I will do this because it aligns with my values or I won't do this because it does not align with my values. You know, one of the digital tools that I share with my clients talks about hidden treasures and those hidden treasures that they refer to are your values. Your values are tied to your identity, which is tied to your value. Now, there are two types of value when it comes to you. That's value singular. Your value is either intrinsic or extrinsic. There are those two words again. Intrinsic value is that value that comes from deep within. It isn't just the experiences from the past, but it begins with the idea that you are fearfully and wonderfully made and you have value simply because you're on this earth. This is the humanity of value. And if you can proclaim that you have value because you're just here and for those of faith because you are a daughter or son of God, that is powerful. That promotes hope. It promotes dignity and it promotes confidence. Your extrinsic value is not so esoteric. In fact, you can measure this value for business leaders. It can be your market value. You can find your market value a few different ways. You could visit Glassdoor. You could visit LinkedIn. You could go interviewing to see what others would pay for your services. This is important for leaders who are wanting to know how they should be treated and valued within their own company. So often we stay in company so long that we forget our own value. And the truth is that proximity and time can eat at the perception of your value. So the longer you stay at a company, while you may get promoted from time to time, the reality is that you will never make the money that you would if you went somewhere else. Please don't apply this to marriage. However, <laughs> You can look at this in a very cynical way when it comes to relationships. The more available you are, sometimes as human beings, we decide that the value that our partner has is less. It's not conscious. This is the way humans operate. And then we have to work very hard to rekindle that. That's why they always say, keep dating your spouse. Remember what brought you together in the first place. But companies don't do this. They really don't. <laughs> they don't reflect and think about what brought us together. It's very transactional, which is the reason why you need to be proactive about knowing your value and keeping your company on its toes to ensure that it is reflecting your value. So in the book, you'll find that I had a mentor that told me to go out and discover my market value. He wasn't encouraging me to leave. 
He just wanted me to know what others would pay me for the very thing that I was sharing with the company where I was. And you know what? Just that knowledge put pep in my step at my current job. I could walk in there with my head held high because I knew that even if I took a lateral move, even at a smaller company, I was at least able to double my bring home. Look, I didn't make this up. You can read this and research this on any of the career sites. The fastest way to move up, the fastest way to make money is to leave sound cynical but that information can also help you in the company where you are so one of the principles in knowing your value is to lean out in order to lean in lean out not just to find out your market value but also to build your tribe if your tribe only exists within the bubble that you've created at your company chances are you will not learn more upskilling increases your value you will not make more you can actually take that market value right back into your company and get adjustments to your salary based on the market or maybe even seek other positions inside but all the same lean out in order to lean in there's more to this message and i encourage you if you want to hear it book me to speak it's so easy to do if you go to bit.ly slash L Michelle Speaks, there is a link where you can book me to speak. You can also go to lmichellesmith.com and click on speaking in the upper navigation. A drop down will happen and there is a speaker request form. Fill it out. I would love to spend time with you and your teams in your organization to piece together more about how knowing your value increases the opportunity for you to live your best life and boost your leadership aspirations. Again, we'll be back later this month with the next edition of the Culture Soup Podcast. It will be towards the end of the month the last Thursday of October. In the meantime, you need to know that I have moved into new office space. I have a tiny studio inside the office space, but there's also a couch, comfy pillows, a hassock, journals, toys, books. It's a comfy space for you to kick back, reflect, plan, strategize, and even visualize what you want for your life and go after it. If you're in the Dallas-Fort Worth area or you happen to be in town, book time with me. You can either do that through the website at lmichellesmith.com or you can call the office at 469-523-1453. If I am not in, feel free to speak to Tammy or Brianna or leave a message. My assistant, Joy, is always around to support as well. Thank you so much for listening to this edition of The Coaching Corner on the Culture Soup Podcast. I appreciate everything. Find us online at theculturesoup.com, on Instagram and Twitter at The Culture Soup, and on Facebook at The Culture Soup Podcast. It takes a lot to put this show together, and special shout out to my audio and video engineer, Andy Baeza, coordinator and social media content manager, Carmen Gamble, EAPA and booking, Joy Fernandez. I'm your host, executive producer and creator, El Michelle Smith. Until next time. The Code Soup Podcast is a production of No Size Communication, LLC. The Culture Soup Podcast is a registered trademark of No Silos Communications, LLC.